Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome. I'm uh, Captain Dan Sermonsen. I'm uh, the spokesperson for the uh, chairman of the military committee. Thank you for coming here today. Uh, I know uh, there has been a lot of uh, things on the agenda here in Brussels today. Um, I hope uh, you're not totally exhausted yet because uh, there's more to come. Shortly, I'll hand over to the uh, chairman of the military committee, General Bartels. And uh, after that, uh, the general statement, uh, there will be a uh, possibility for some questions. Uh, general? Well, thank you very much. And uh, once again, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and very kind of you to be here. Um, first of all, I, wish you, I would like to wish you a, a happy new year. And uh, before starting to brief you on the outcome of the military committee in chief of defense format, uh, I would like to reflect on the year which just passed. As you know, I took up my post as chairman of the NATO's military committee in January 2012, a year ago. Since that time, uh, NATO has been working on some crucial issues, the most substantial one being setting up the new command structure, which is designed to be robust, flexible, and above all, capable uh, to face our future security challenges. Of course, this is linked to using assets and capabilities in an optimal manner, but I will come back to this later and provide more details on our transformation uh, initiatives, uh, which we are currently engaged in. Uh, during the last two days, uh, we have uh, addressed a wide range of issues and have uh, arrived at uh, constructive military advice to the North Atlantic Council and some clear guidance for the NATO military authorities. In particular, we have focused on three key themes, that is to say operations, partners, and transformation. On Afghanistan, nations have reaffirmed their commitment uh, to support the commander ISAF in achieving a successful transition of security to the Afghan forces over the next two years. We noted that we are close to the 2013 milestone, which we defined at the Chicago summit uh, last year. And concurrent with the announcement of the fifth and final tranche of Afghan provinces to enter the transition process, the mid-2013 milestone will mark the beginning uh, of the Afghan National Security Forces assumption of the lead for combat operations across the whole of the country. At this time, our main effort will shift from combat to supporting the Afghans in preparation for conclusion of the transition process at the end of uh, 2014. We also had uh, frank discussions concerning the potential scope and challenges to the new NATO mission. I would like to use this occasion to reaffirm that NATO allies and partners are committed to training, advising, and assisting the Afghan National Forces after 2014. And the military committee is fully aware of the need to stay focused on our current operation, while at the same time planning for the new mission. In addition to that, we are engaged in transferring tasks to the Afghan authorities and redeploying material equipment. Details on how we will conduct the post-2014 missions have not yet been finalized, but they will be discussed quite intensively over the coming weeks. For Kosovo, there is reason to be optimistic now that tangible progress is being made in the belgrade pristina dialogue and with the agreement on the integrated border management uh, implementation. Uh, our commitment to this operation also remains firm, and we keep focus on ensuring the required force structure in order to fulfill uh, our mission, which is to maintain a safe and secure environment. On partnerships, NATO Chiefs of Defense met with the Mediterranean Dialogue countries and were updated on the security challenges in that region and the impact on Europe. There remain opportunities for NATO to work with partners in this area, particularly on the reduction of illicit small arms trafficking. And in the Euro-Atlantic Partner Session, we concentrated specifically on those areas where we can increase transparency and develop 
mutually supporting capabilities. Notably, we have agreed an ambitious program of work for cooperation with Russia for 2013, this year, which demonstrates our mutual commitment to strengthen our relationship. And let me tell you that we concluded with a high success rate, close to 90%, uh, initiatives undertaken in the 2012 NATO-Russia work plan. So this cooperation was particularly successful in the areas of counterterrorism, counter piracy, and counter improvised explosive devices. Where counter piracy is concerned, our joint efforts have been quite significant. Uh, Russian ships received training at the Center of Excellence for Maritime Interdiction at Suda Bay in Crete, where both NATO and Russian crews exchanged experience and trained counter piracy tactics. And this year, our ability to cooperate will further improve through implementing a common secure communication system, which will enable Russian and NATO ships to communicate with each other over secure lines. Finally, on transformation, as I alluded to in my introduction, we have set out a vision for NATO command and force structures, which, as I previously mentioned, must be capable, interoperable, and also able to operate together with partners to meet the full spectrum of future challenges. To achieve this, we are undertaking a number of activities, including the development of a roadmap to transformation. For instance, we are considering ways to focus the NATO exercise program on capability development. And in preparation for this, we will adjust the exercise plan for 2014 to concentrate on the Connected Forces Initiative so that it is fully implemented by 2015. This is the initiative which will improve interoperability of our forces through military education and training to include our partners. In conclusion, NATO Chiefs of Defense have agreed on bringing transformation to the forefront of our focus as we progressively change our operational tempo in, in Afghanistan, which is our current number one operation, we need to ensure that NATO's military structures and capabilities stay fit for purpose and match our core task, which are one, collective defense, two, crisis management, and three, cooperative security. I recognize that the global financial and economic crisis has limited our defense spending. Even more reason, therefore, to achieve the best results with what we have. And this is, of course, the basic principle of the NATO smart defense, uh, working on multinational solutions to bring costs down, but keeping capabilities strong. Uh, emerging security challenges have no boundaries, and we need to be ready to deter and defend our countries against any threat. Revitalizing the NATO response force will be crucial to this endeavor. The NATO response force, as you know, is a multinational readiness force made up of land, air, maritime, and special forces components that the Alliance can deploy quickly to wherever it is needed. The NIF initiative was announced for the first time at the Prague summit in November 2002 and became fully operational late, four years later. Today it comprises three parts, the command and control element from the NATO command structure, the immediate response force, a joint force of about 11,000 troops provided by allies, and a response force pool which can supplement the immediate response force if required with about 16,000 troops. A very visible part of the NIF is permanently deployed at sea where the NATO standing maritime groups provide support on a rotational basis to both Operation Ocean Shield and Operation Active Endeavor, which is NATO's counter-terrorism mission in the Mediterranean Sea. I stress these aspects because I believe the NATO Response Force is the perfect platform to develop and refine common doctrines and bring transformations forward. In fact, it plays two important roles Firstly, it provides us with a strong and flexible force. And secondly, it gives vital training in operating and working together. And here I think we have very good opportunities
to enhance connectivity within the Alliance and with those partners who want to participate. And in this regard, we welcome Sweden's consideration to join the NATO Response Force as a way to maintain their interoperability. Sweden is a highly capable and committed partner, and I'm sure they could make a valuable contribution to the NATO Response Force. To summarize, this has been a very productive two days, and we will reassess these deliverables at the next Military Committee in Chief of Defense session, which takes place in about mid-May. And once again, thank you for your attention. Thank you for your attention, and I'm ready to take a number of questions. <laughs>